Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Don O'Dell's Legends. My name is Art Tapaldi. I'm the editor of Blues Music Magazine, one of the largest blues magazines in the country. Take some time and check us out at our website, bluesmusicmag.com, or go to our Facebook page and check out some of our subscription deals. Well, tonight at o uh, Don O'Dell's Legends, we're pleased to have one of uh, America's finest young blues rock guitar players, if you will, Samantha Fish. Samantha, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I think it was about two years ago you were here, right about the same time. Yeah, about two years, yeah. I think. And um, so basically, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to learn, on, learn some of the biographical details of Samantha, how she started, where she's from, who her influences are, I would simply suggest you go to one of the earlier programs here on uh, Don O'Dell's Legends. Today we're going to talk about your new record out there, which is called Wild Heart. Yep. It's just yep. out. Um, what I found interesting about it was this was recorded in like three or four different studios. Yeah, we kind of took this, this like a pilgrimage we yeah. went through Louisiana, Mississippi, and the Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. Right. How does that work to record something in three different places? Technology is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it is. It, we we started out. I mean, the bulk of the recording was done in Shreveport with. Uh, I mean, Luther produced it. Luther mm -hmm. Dickinson. Luther Dickinson. He's from the North Mississippi All Stars. Yep. Son of the the wonderful musician Jim Dickinson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. He produced it and played bass, and uh, we we did it at Brady Blade's studio where he played drums. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, so the bulk of the record, like the raw trio stuff, is kind of was you know at a uh, Blade Studios. Down in and then Louisiana. We, yeah. And yeah. then we recorded two songs. At a Luther Studio, the Zebra Ranch Studio, so right. it's father's studio in um, in Mississippi, mm -hmm. with Charday Thomas and Lightning Malcolm, and that right. was more of an acoustic session. So there were different songs okay. for that okay. session. And then you know we we did some guitar work at Ardent Studios, and then we did um, uh, we had some backup vocalists come into Royal Studios. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah, which yeah. was really cool. Uh, Chantel, Norman, and Reese. Oh wow! Started, so. Wow. Yeah. Now what? Um, what does each stu does each studio bring something a little different to, to yeah. the songs? Can you can you tell? I mean, could, could the average listener tell? You know, they talk about oh, Memphis has this greasy sound, or somebody talks about oh, we have the board from the old stacks. Yeah. Can you, oh, can, absolutely. I think you know, just just being in a different region kind of, you know, it changes your mood and the vibe, especially you know the history of the studios. Mm -hmm. It's all. It's all really cool. I mean, I, I could definitely tell a difference from Zebra Ranch to, yeah. to Blade, you know? I mean, it's it's night and day, they're different studios, but they, ev ha they each have their own magic, you right, know? And the right. Royal Studios was incredible, yeah. too. So. Now, when you when you say Zebra Studios down to Blades, was it, is one more technologically, you know, up and running, and the other one is kind of, you know, <laughs> done on with rubber bands? And well, a, well, like uh, Luther's studio, I mean, it's, it's it's out in the wilderness, man. I mean, it's like it's very small, and you know what I liked about it is I could just I could tell that it grew up there, and it yeah. was a, it had such a cool, like eclectic history. Yeah. And, I mean, just a a great vibe, you know. It, right. It had a home vibe, so. Uh, I mean, Blade was amazing. We walked in; it's brand new, so it's yeah. like all these cool microphones. <laughs> and it, it sounds incredible. You know, the mm -hmm. rooms are the isolation rooms are just perfect. Right. So, right. Yeah. I mean, they're all different. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. Now you mentioned Luther a few times here. Um, how did you hook up with Luther Dickinson um, to produce a Samantha Fish record? Kind of. It was kind of a. You know, I, I got his record, World Boogie's Coming, mm -hmm. and I saw that he and Cody produced that themselves, and I, was, yeah. I just thought it was a great record, really, f like, just had a fresh vibe to it, and um, when I was talking to my manager, Ruben, about producers, you know, we've kind of been going through the, the list of them, and I was, I, I just brought up Luther, mm -hmm. and uh, we thought it was a cool idea, and so he contacted his manager, and that kind of went back and forth for a while, and he, he wanted to do it. Nice, so, nice. Yeah. What does he bring to it? I mean, what you've, had, you've had a number of producers, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, Mike Zito. Just Mike, mm -hmm. yeah, um, who's done your other album. Yeah. What does Luther bring to this? You know, just a whole other, uh, just a whole other life experience. You know, I mean, he's he's recorded so many albums, and he's mm -hmm. had you know a lot of experience behind the board and in the studio, and uh, you know, I mean, he was with the Crows, and yeah. So I mean, just just a lot of life experience and playing experience, and his yeah. guitar playing's incredible. I mean, he's. He's got a really good grasp of pretty much any instrument. It's, right, right. Yeah. You know, he, yeah. he's just all around uh, really innovative too. You know, I mean, he'd hear things that I, I was like, wow. He'd put textures on stuff that I, uh -huh. you know, didn't, I wouldn't have ever thought of. You know. Yeah. That's yeah. what you want to produce. That's right. That's so right. Yeah. He did a great job. Cool. And and what does he maybe add to Samantha Fish's sonic palette? Does he, you know, now that you've had the experience with him, 
what's seeped through that, that in your playing, perhaps? Well, he, um, I've been a fan of his, I was a fan of his for a while mm. before, you know, we actually met. Um, because that kind of blues, the North Mississippi yeah, sound, yeah. is really what influenced me the most to start playing really? blues music. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, that was really, you know, what, what kind of started it all for me. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and to find him, you know, him and his brother doing that, that stuff, it was, uh, it was just kind of a modern take on, on it. And I, you know, so it's always, he's always been like kind of an influence. Yeah. Um, you know, but watching him play and seeing his approach in the studio. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't forget or unlearn those things. Yeah. So I'm just trying to, you know, find them, hone into there. it, you know, yeah. every time I play now. Cause yeah, you gotta, you can't not learn something around that guy. Yeah. 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 To, to our fans who are watching who don't know anything, can you explain this North Mississippi sound that Luther is a part of yeah. and, and who some of the other people are from that area? Well, um, I really got involved, or you know, interested in uh, R.L. Burnside and mm -hmm. Junior Kimbrough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. Those are guys that are kind of big night in the '90s. Right? Yeah, they were huge in the '90s. Fat um, Possum sounds. Fat Possum, you know? and they were playing at some p pretty big rock venues too in those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's you know, to me, I grew up on rock and roll. Right. Like kind of like Stonesy, really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. loose, punky. Yeah. Uh, you know. And uh, to me, that's kind of the blues equivalent. They're just real. It's a harder edge, yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. to refer to them as the black coffee of the blues. You know, <laughs> when you first hear it, you might not like it if, if you're used to a more sanitized sound, yeah. you know. But once you acquire a taste... It's, it, to it, me, it gets right to the heart of the matter. It does. And, and that, that, to me, is the blues. So yeah. it, like, that's, I think that's why I was drawn to it, because yeah. it's just so... It's just raw. It's right. right there. It's real. Right, right. Did you... Does the music become even more real... By, by living in that area, by by actually, I mean, what does the land of that North Mississippi area do? Does the music make sense? I yeah, guess that's what I'm I think so. And you know, coming from Kansas City, mm -hmm. like there's so much of it that you know I can't even scratch a surface of because yeah. I didn't grow up there. Uh, you know, they grow up playing together and they right. grow up playing that kind of music and growing up hearing it all the time. I mean, yeah. it's kind of like those new, it's like New Orleans players. I mean, the only people that play like that are people who kind of grew up there and it's because they grow up doing that. Right, right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think there is, there's just a part of it that you kind of have to be from there to, to grasp it. I mean, I'm just trying to get a little flavor of it because I love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. How long did you spend there in, in North Mississippi? Um, Cumulative over the course of my life. No, no, just in oh, this, in just this experience. Like a two days. Okay. Two days. Yeah. 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 And w was it that kind of a time schedule at all these different studios? Um, no, we spent more time in, in Louisiana, Louisiana and Shreveport. Yeah, because yeah. you did more songs there. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, those couple days in Mississippi, it was it was a little surreal. It was a little freaky, you know. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm playing in a in a group with uh, Luther and Malcolm and Chardonnay. I'm Chardonnay, like, oh my yeah. God. What am I doing here? Yeah, you know, it, yeah. it was just incredible because kind of a little dream come true session. That's right. Um, that's right. And and you got Charde, whose roots go back to her her grandfather. Yeah. You know, Otha Turner. Or Otha Turner, mm -hmm. and the the fife and drum, the cane fifes. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Luther took me on a trip before we went to the studio. A little mm -hmm. backstory. I mean, we drove through the country and yeah. all the cotton fields. We saw where they do the picnic jam every year. Oh, nice. Yeah. He took yeah. me around and showed me some stuff. It was cool. Oh yeah. So cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was. Uh, I always look back on it and smile. I was very fortunate in 1995 to go to Junior's Juke Joint. Yeah. And when it was still, and, and Junior and RL played there that night, and we pulled up. I was doing a seminar at Old Miss in, in July uh, for teachers. And yeah. so this big Old Miss bus pulled up in front of Junior. I, I said to them, We have to go there. You have to get a bus to take us there so I can show <laughs> these teachers this real authentic blues. Yeah. And I remember the bus pulled up, and there's Junior sitting out there. And I went up to him and I went, uh, Junior? Is it all right if 20 or 30 teachers come in and he's, you can see the dollar signs in his eyes. He's, he's like, going, 20 or 30 teachers, three bucks a head, bring them in. Yeah, and, nice. And it was, it was quite an experience, it's something I'll never forget. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, it makes the music that you hear make sense when you see that this was a Sunday night at 10 o'clock mm -hmm. and these people were there to party. Yep. And, and they were having a ball. Man. Now, the other place that you went was Nashville to hone your songwriting I skills. I did. I did. Wow. Yeah. What What do you learn from a Nashville songwriter? Well, what, what can they teach you? 
you know, oh. um, well, with, when working, I was working with, uh, I ended up working with Jim McCormick. He mm -hmm. ended up, the songs that we did together okay. ended up on the record. And, um, you know, just, just watching somebody who, that's what they do for a living, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's, he, he writes songs for, he's written for Trisha Yearwood and Keith wow. Urban and a lot of big country artists. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that whole scene is, it's all about the song. Yes. And, um, you know, just to watch them, they, they, there's like an old, they have, you know, Music Row. It's all these buildings and office buildings full of songwriters that all wow. they do is sit there and work on songs. So when I got to sit down with him, yeah. I was really nervous yeah. going in, yeah. obviously. Did you, do you go in and you go, I brought these ideas with me? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had I had like half finished songs mm -hmm. or, you know, I'd kind of plan for them. I what'd you think? And and we just clicked. Our chemistry oh, nice. was awesome. Oh, I mean, we, we, I mean, he's... Awesome. Yeah. We just got along so well. I mean, I want to work with him again. He's, yeah, yeah. And uh, we had fun. We mm -hmm. were laughing, cutting up, writing these songs. And it was just kind of a, you know, I, I, I think that it's hard to find. I got lucky that I found somebody I've got good chemistry with because right. it's not always easy. That's right. You know, we were having fun writing these songs. It just came out. Everything started happening naturally. And yeah. That's yeah. how you want music to be. Right, You, know, you right. want it to just feel... Oh, this, this falls in. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was his contribution to the songs? Was it was he was he a wordsmith? Was he helping you with phrasing things? Was he? Yeah, is he you more, know. Are they more musical and let's do it in this key or in this? Well, pattern? it was it was more uh, like lyrics and stuff uh -huh. because I kind of had the the structure of the songs and I'd come in with like a verse and a chorus okay. and I'd say, all right, what do you think? And then we'd write the second verse together. Mm -hmm. We, mm -hmm. you know, maybe switch a few things around, you know, to make the story flow a little better yeah. in the song yeah. and. Yeah, because that's what you're doing. You're telling stories. And right, right, yeah. <laughs> it was nice, though, because, I mean, to, to work on it from that perspective, it's like, oh, of course, this is all, this makes complete sense. You know, yeah. you want you want people to connect to your songs. That's uh, right, yeah. It's not all word salads. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you really have to be be precise in the words you're choosing. Yeah. You know, I, I know other people I've talked to who've gotten instruction on songwriting have said one of the biggest things I learned was how to edit down you know and not be so wordy yeah say it a lot simpler exactly yeah. exactly yeah.